Today we're, we are visiting uh, Yokomoko Church in Tucker Hill, in Westmoreland County, Virginia. This church was one, is one of three in Copal Parish today. The church was built in 1706. An infant, Richard Henry Lee, was baptized in this fount in, uh, on the 5th of April in 1732. As an adult, he served on the vestry of this parish for 35 years. On a cold winter morning in mid-February 1766, two brothers met to discuss one of the most important documents in American history. Brothers Richard Henry Lee and Francis Lightfoot Lee secretly met in this church a week before the circulation of the evolving Leestown resolutions to discuss the key uh, points and to make the final touches to their masterpiece. Are the citizens of the Northern Neck prepared to defy the king? Can the brothers depend on the support of the signers? Are these signers prepared to deal with the implications of their actions? Mr. Ritchie of Hobbs Hole has been a nuisance to, and threatened to clear his entire store of stamped paper. For this protest to be successful, the signers must be committed to deal quickly and forcefully with the lights of Ritchie. Are they prepared to stand for what they believe? Join us now as this intrigue unfolds. Well, brother, we are here at Ekamako, so let us uh, join in prayer as we seek guidance for we begin our discussions. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we call upon you today to seek your blessing and guidance as my brother and I begin these discussions regarding the Leeds Town Resolutions and may you guide us in these efforts and may our actions be acceptable in your sight. In this I pray, amen. Father, we know that we can't accomplish anything unless we have your blessing. This is an anxious time for all of us. In our colony here, that uh, we're dealing with things that are uh, serious, serious matters. We pray that you will intervene, that you will guide us, that you will lead us, that we will do and say things that will be according to your will. I ask that you will bless us as we begin to prepare this resolution that we will put on paper things that you would inspire us to do and for us to be able to be free people with a right that we were given from birth. Bless us now, Father, as we do this work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, brother, I uh, appreciate you taking the time to uh, meet today um, here at Comico. I thought it would be excellent for us to uh, review the articles we've drafted for the resolutions and make sure that we are comfortable with what they say and, and how they say it. This, this is the last opportunity that we have before we begin to go out to the countryside here in a few days to spread the word. I agree, Frank. You know, I've always been the hothead of this family. Sometimes my temper gets away. <laughs> I'm sure you will agree. And you've always been the level head one of the group. So I value what you have to say and the input that you have because this is a very serious matter. And these are things that if we're going to put our names 
And we're going to ask our mm -hmm. fellow uh, patriots to uh, put their name on the line. And most definitely, we should know what we are doing. Well, thank you, Richard. I, um, I too, rely upon uh, your passion to uh, fuel uh, my logical tempered uh, thinking. So I, I think we'll be uh, uh, a good, good match for, this, uh, for the task at, at hand. Um, there's a lot on the line, and as I, as I reflect on the preamble, shall we say, of, of the resolutions, it, uh, I think it does an excellent job of laying out what the issue is and, 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 and the call to action. Yes. Uh, so I think it sets the tone. Yes, I, I agree. We have to be careful that we make sure that we get to the point of what mm -hmm. we want, but not go overboard. Mm -hmm. True. A lot of times, less said is enough. And I think that's what we're doing. We're covering in these articles just enough that needs to be said, but to be the right things that mm -hmm. we want to say that includes everything that is necessary in this situation. Well, we, we are, I think, prudently and, and wisely acknowledging our obedience and yeah. obedience uh, to His Majesty the the king, but also to qualify that statement with the fact that this is contingent upon us receiving the constitutional rights and liberty that we are guaranteed as British subjects. Yes, you're correct, Frank. You know, it's becoming exceedingly hard. But we know that we are English money and we should show allegiance to a king, but sometimes it's getting extremely difficult for us to be able to do it. But yet it's important in this document, you're correct, it's important that we right up front show our allegiance to him because this is going to him and we should get his attention immediately. <coughs> well, so I, I think the, uh, the articles there uh, address that and because very soon thereafter in, in there we're getting rather pointed. <laughs> That is the thing, this is just a few words of hopefully eloquence grab his attention, then we're going to turn loose what we need to say. Well, the, uh, the fact that we believe we were raised as British subjects yes. and uh, we view ourselves as, as British subjects and citizens yes. and as such, are entitled to the same rights that every British subject has. I agree. We are Englishmen. But yet we are not. I agree 100%, Frank. Sometimes, the more I think about this thing, Frank, I think my temper's getting ready to kick in here. I get extremely upset because you know that my dad has worked very hard. Indeed. And an honest man, a good Englishman. And a family before him, good Englishman. Strong allegiance to the king. Quite so. But the king is so far away now. And everything we have here in the Northern Neck, it is either our parents or us. We have worked hard for what we have, right? Right, indeed. We have developed what we have. We have, we have formed a form of government here that is our doings, that is our way of life. How do they know over there what's going on here? Well, they would have you taken to Williamsburg for trial, or in some cases, back to England for trial. <clears throat> ah, I'm scared of that. That's what, the word that I'm hearing. What, without benefit of a trial by your jury, by your peers, and we are taxed, yet we have no representation to set that tax. And so, are we really British subjects? As you know, I mean, I, I, I am a student of the older history and classics. Yes. And I have read ad nauseum uh, about the goings on 500 years ago 
that got King John in a whole lot of trouble with the British subjects. And the result was them being guaranteed the English rights that you and I are standing here talking about now, 500 years later. Yes. We're being denied. You know, they calling you and me a second class citizen. It's insulting. <laughs> you are no second class man. And nor are you, sir. We are not. Boy, I'm telling you what. I can feel it. I am not a second class citizen. Certainly I'm not going to stand for being called that. From someone who is over there that doesn't know how strong and how honest and how hard working our people are. I'm not going to do it. I'm sitting here, standing here, sir, with my hand on this Bible. What is this? It is paper. Puts me in mind this very Bible, the deck of cards we played whist with two nights ago, the gazette you purchased on the way here this morning, the seal on the diploma for your son from William and Mary, all taxed by the Stamp Act. I'll tell you what. Far-reaching, invasive. What an ingenious idea that someone over there came up with. A devious plan. Devious. I'm sure they spent a many hours trying to figure out. I can see them now. I can see them sitting around now just talking like, how are we going to get the money out of that bunch over there in America? Are we going to tax? Nails? What's next? Are we going to tax glass? What can we tax that we can touch every single one of them? What concerns me, Richard, is that others among us may not share the same passion regarding the Stamp Act and its invasive nature, and therefore may not be as motivated to take the stand that you and I are. For example, at the tavern two nights ago, I overheard discussions involving Mr. Ritchie of Hobbs Hole, and it appears by all counts that he intends to clear his stores with stamp paper within the week. Yes? He's more concerned about hmm. his money than he is about our freedoms. Well, I, I submit to you, Richard, that there is a cancer there, and we, and we must cut it out. For if we cannot excise the cancer among us here in our environs, then what chance do we have for these resolutions to pass and be accepted not only here, but in adjacent counties and colonies? He needs to know because if, if, if he is allowed to proceed, this will doom us to failure, and failure is not an option. What would we do to someone who decided that they were going to continue with using stamp paper when the rest of us, or a group of us, agree that we will not do that? What I would suggest to you, sir, are, are two things. First, in our articles here, we have made it clear that when we take a stand on this issue, that each of us will in turn have the back of the other. Yes. So we are standing behind them, we're standing beside them, yes. and we face what they face. Yes, that's important. And they have to know and yes. understand that. Yes. The second thing is that we form a contingent of our associators and pay a personal visit to Mr. Ritchie and any other similar merchant yes. who takes these kinds of actions. Right. And strength in numbers. Strength in numbers and make him aware of the error of his ways. Ah, mm. and, came to me. And we can, I have the feathers and I believe you have the kettles and the tar. I sure do. I got a big mm. old cast iron pot that holds right many gallons of hot tar. Um, I tell you what, you soak him down and you feather him He's going to change his mind pretty quickly 
and come around to our way of thinking on this thing. And you're right about one other point that you just said. We have to bind ourselves together as brothers. Frank, you and I are a brother. I would go to my death for you, and I would go to my death for every single one of our other brothers that sign along with us in this agreement. And if that's what it's going to take, it's going to take the uh, whole entire area to be able to bind ourselves together. And that's what this document says. That's what it says. And I submit to you also, brother, that to add to your point, we must be resolute in getting as many people to sign as possible. Yes. And they, in turn, make visits. Yes. Because the numbers, the masses, this is what will gather the attention of the king and the prime minister. It, it is not the, the subtle gathering at the church down the way where 10 people sign. No, we need 100, 200, 300 people. Yes. And let the Gazette take the word forward that it yes. began here and it is now through all of the colonies. Yes. There must be no chink in the armor for if there is disease, we'll destroy it. Yes. Strength. It is strength. Strength. And willing to put your name where your mouth is. You know, it is easy to stand up in a public meeting and voice to your opinion against these oppressions that England is putting on us and to, to ramp and rave and raise our hands and fists and walk back and forth and holler and scream, but that don't matter to nothing until you're willing to put your name on that piece of paper and put that seal there. And safe. people have to be willing to stand for that. They must realize and understand that besides the political oppression, there is the economic impression. Yes. The oppression that is being brought forth by uh, this mercantile system of, of, of trade. Every planter that I come in contact with has had three successive years of increased crop failure yes. and economic loss. Yes. They are so far in debt to these uh, merchants in, in London, they'll never, see, they'll never see the light of day. A bunch of thieves. We work hard. We work hard on our farms. We need to make a living. Frank, I'm ready. I am ready. I'm not a second class citizen. Nor I. I know what I, my rights are, that I have, should have the right to a trial by my own peers here. I know that we should have a representation, someone from our area to stand in our government and to talk and to consider things that are considered as laws and things that True are words, passed brother. And, uh, and certainly about our taxes. No one has a right to take our property away from us unless we have the right to be able to put ourselves there with a representative to vote for it. And we are not being allowed to do that. Well, I think your passion has inspired me, sir. I think it only remains that we are in agreement now with the resolutions as they are drafted. Yes. And that uh, we begin the circulation uh, as early as tomorrow, yes. and that we will form our committee of safety to call upon uh, Mr. Ritchie uh, this week. For now, I suggest we return home to our families for a quiet evening before the storm begins. I agree. Frank, it's been good to be with you today. And you, sir. I appreciate you, Frank. You are, you are strong and a Good brother. And you as well, sir. Let's be on our way. On our way. We have witnessed the calm before the storm. Within the week, 115 brave patriots placed their lives, their families, and their fortunes on the line by signing the Leestown resolutions. In just a few months though, Parliament would repeal the Stamp Act. However, many more equally egregious acts would follow. The actions taken by these brave citizens would spawn the birth of a new nation. 
the wording, the phrasing, the protesting tone would be duplicated in similar efforts throughout the various colonies. You can witness this in the Prince, Henry, uh, Prince William Resolves of 1774, the Declaration of the Independence, and the Bill of Rights. You have just witnessed history in action and the founding of our nation, brought to you from the cradle of democracy, the northern neck of Virginia. <laughs>